Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. It is still Flying Pig February and we are looking at the game Old School Tactical Volume 3. This one will be uh, featuring the Hellbent expansion, which takes this, uh, this series or this edition of the Old School Tactical series out of uh, the South Pacific specifically and more in just the Pacific itself, uh, you know, spreading it out through the island hopping campaign ending a new map with beach hexes and so on and so forth. Um, it also adds additional counters and landing craft and things like that. Um, but what I am going to play here is basically a scenario from the uh, invasion of Luzon in the Philippines from January 16th, 1945. We will be playing scenario number 10. There are 14 scenarios in this expansion. This one is called Action at Pot Pot. And uh, it reads, General Yamashita Tomoyuki committed tanks of the 2nd Armored Division in counterattacks to slow the U.S. Army's advance. Japanese tanks were ill-equipped to take on the Americans, but their crews were just as fanatical as any troops in the IJA. West of Binalonan, soldiers and tanks of the Shigemi Detachment attacked the advancing GIs. So this is an eight-turn uh, scenario. We're using Map 7, which is the Hellbent map. The map coordinates, uh, G G12 through EE12, north map edge. Uh, I will show you that when we, when I show you the deployment of the various forces. We don't have any off-board assets. Special rules, U.S. player sets up first. Control hexes are American at scenario start. No level one hills. Treat those hexes as level zero. No hills. Victory. To win, the Japanese player must own two control hexes at scenario end. The Japanese player wins immediately at the end of any turn if they own all three control hexes. U.S. player wins by denying a Japanese victory. Our Japanese forces, the Shigemi Detachment, will be six rifle squads, one sap, uh, three sappers, two tank killers, a lieutenant, and three sergeants, three light machine guns, two satchels. They'll set up on the east map edge on turn eight which is the first turn of the game, as I mentioned in the previous video, which I highly recommend watching if you have not seen it. Uh, this game counts the turns down. So we start at eight and count down. They will get reinforcements on the second game, second turn, turn seven. When their tanks show up, they will get four Chihas, four Hagos, two Teikes, and an armor leader. And they will enter on the east map edge, and for that turn, they will get an additional two impulse dice which would give them four you can see here their gut check the japanese don't have a gut check number as i mentioned in the previous video again if you did not watch the previous video on old school tactical definitely should check that out uh impulse dice they get two d6s american forces from the 25th infantry division so these will be army forces in the previous scenario i played from the base game we were using the marines so we're going to look at the army this time Five rifle squads, one heavy machine gun, a lieutenant and two sergeants, one BAR, one M2 mortar, two bazookas, three foxholes. They set up on turn eight, anywhere west of the T hex line. On turn five, we will get two M3 Stewart tanks and two rifle squads. And on turn four, the Americans will add two M4A2 Shermans and an armor leader. So we will get some tank on tank action in this one. Um... Picking this scenario, I, I, I kind of looked for something that was reasonably short, only because I tend to um, take a long time with longer scenarios. Obviously, the shorter the scenario, the quicker the video playthrough can be. I also didn't want anything with hidden, hidden units. This is essentially, or it, not essentially, this is a two-player game. I am playing it solitaire, so... Uh, using hidden units, I mean, I can do that, but um, it's simpler and I don't have to house rule, uh, you know, make house rules to handle how I do that and stuff if I just do it with, uh, if I just avoid it entirely. This also features uh, U.S. Army units, which, as I mentioned, were not shown in my previous playthrough, and tanks as well. The scenarios in this game are pretty, pretty great um, and diverse and varied. You have some Pele Lu stuff, some Okinawa, some Saipan uh, the first scenario is Wake Island. Yeah, so we're going to get this underway. I'm going to set up and we'll take a brief pause uh, and set up and then we'll come back and we'll start playing Hellbent from Old School Tactical Volume 3. 
Uh, I didn't mention this, but this is a Shane Logan design and a Mark Walker game from Flying Pig Games as part of my feature uh, series for the month of February 2023, Flying Pig February. Everybody's deployed. Our Japanese forces are here on the east map edge. We're actually looking north to south, essentially. Uh, so this is east and this is west. So just flip it over in your head. Americans are here and here. So our control hexes, which are what would determine victory, are L5, M6, and R6. So these three right here. Those are the hexes the Japanese need to capture. Our Americans will hold, will helpfully hold those. So we're going to get started here. So our turn sequence starts with reinforcements, which don't don't occur on this first turn. And then we have uh, attached leaders and weapons already done. No smoke counters to deal with. No scenario rolls. And so we're going to go right into the um, and no rallying. So we're going to go right into the initiative roll. So both sides get to roll two dice. White is Japan, black is the U.S. We have a 9 for the U.S. and a 10 for Japan, so Japan gets initiative. Now, just as I did in the previous video when I did uh, the base game scenario, I am not going to show you the impulse track and the victory point track and all that stuff. I'm not, because I want you to be able to see as much of the map as possible, and I may zoom in depending when we get, you know, something uh, cl up close action. I did look at what the counters look like in the first video again, so if you want to go back and check that out, please do. Um, I will zoom in occasionally, but this is probably going to be the base look because it shows the entire map. Um, these four corners here are the corners of the playable area on this map for this scenario. So we know the Japanese have the initiative. Now we have to roll for how many impulse points they get. According to our scenario rules, they roll two die. 2d6, and whatever they get is how much they get in terms of impulse points. And they rolled a 9, so they get 9 impulse points. And let me put that down here. So my impulse points are over here on my right this time. They were on my left before. Now we'll roll for the Americans. They get 1d6 plus 2. So we'll just do this. So they get 8. So that's a lot of impulse points for both sides here to start off with, or a respectable amount at least. And the Japanese get to go first, so they will move some of their units. Now this is not a night scenario, so we will have to deal with some uh, long-range fire. Now the firing range for most, Amer most of these American units is six. We do have a heavy machine gun here, which has a range of 12, but we do have some things that will impact line of sight. So looking at our terrain here, um, these are open. So most of these are open. This here is a uh, is shell holes, which don't degrade any uh, don't degrade line of sight, but is a plus, but is a two for movement cost to move through it. Then we have uh, these guys here. This is like. Uh, Palm debris, and palm debris actually degrades line of sight. Wield, wield can't go through it. Um, tanks can, but they have the possibility of bogging, and it costs two for foot. So a lot of these are, this is like shell holes here. So a lot of this is open. This degrades line of sight, so our machine gun essentially can go out to about here, and then this is going to degrade this would degrade one, this would degrade two, and this is blocked. And so even if you go down the spine, like this here counts because the way line of sight in this game works is if you go along a hex, hex side that has degrading or blocking line of sight, it, it does affect it. So, and they also have palms over here, which also degrade line of sight. So the Japanese will have, you know, they would like say, say we start with Lieutenant Akimoto here. Or Arimoto. I think it's Arimoto, actually. So he's got two rifle squads with an attached light machine gun. We can do a group activation, spend two impulse points, and move him forward. So their movement point is three. They can go one, whoops, one, two, three. Stop there. Because we go middle 
to middle. So we would cross through one, two, well, it would be a minus two, I think, but they could fire at them, I'm pretty sure. I think so, anyway. Like if we go from middle to middle here, doesn't quite fit, but it looks like looks like it crosses through uh, to two degrading. Yeah, I think they can shoot at them because it doesn't. This one doesn't impact it. Uh, so we will take a shot. That will be. Um, since we're just using the machine gun, that's just one impulse point for the Americans. So they will both be at seven. This is a crude weapon, so it's basically independent of uh, Quinn and the rifle squad. So it does have a firepower of three and a range of 12. And we'll attack the top unit, whose defense is three. So it's basically going to be in column zero, and then we'll take our... Now we're, you know, um, so here's where it becomes in, eh, may not be worth it. So you have, we're in column zero, but we have two degraded line of sight. So the minus so, two here is going to knock them down to a minus two. And as you can see, the most, we can't eliminate, but we can casualty if we roll a 10, 11, or 12. So we have a, uh, a minus two here. And then all this stuff, no moving fire. The attached leader is attached to the squad, so I don't think that impacts. We don't have any height differences, no ambush, none of this stuff. So it's going to be uh, here and no adjustments. So basically, we need to roll a 10, 11, or 12. So, whoops, we got a 9. That was kind of lame because the one die just kind of fell into the tray there. But I'm not going to re-roll it. A 9... On the minus two is the is break, but Japanese units don't break. So we drop a fired on our machine gun. And leave it at that. Okay. That ends that. We'll put a moved marker on him. Uh, now it would be the Americans pulse impulse, but they're gonna they're gonna pass. So they use one to pass because they were actually tied with the Japanese. So they're going to be at six. Japanese will move. We're going to do another group move. So looking again at our machine gun, because he can fire twice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And as far as line of sight, um, I think they're safe. I think they're safe. We're going to move Sergeant Miyaki and his two rifle squads. Group move. One, two, three, four. Actually, wait. That's totally wrong. Shell holes cost two. So that's two, three. He's going to be he's going to be here. And there's the way enough, there's certainly enough degrading terrain here to prevent them from firing. So we will stop that there. That moves them down to five impulse points. Go to the Americans. They really don't have anything that they're going to do. They have more impulse points than the Japanese, so they will lose one. We'll go back to the Japanese. They're going to move again. We have, these are just single units, so we can go one, two, and then palm debris costs two, but they, they do have a four, so they can move there. So we'll put this moved. That moves them down to three. The Americans will pass again. They're at four. Japanese will move. So that's two. Uh, hmm. Two, three. And they won't be able to fire because that's going to cross through all three of these. So we'll just stick a moved on here. That's only one. So that moves them down to two. The Americans will pass. They have three. Japanese will move again. They have two sappers. They can't group move these guys. They have to move them separately. So that's two, uh, three, and then so that'll move them down to one. The Americans will again pass. Uh, actually, wait. Maybe they won't pass. Mm, well, yeah, they will. 
because the shell holes don't degrade, but these two do. So maybe they will fire at, they're going to fire at the sapper here. So he's in clear terrain. He's not going to get any terrain benefit, just like they didn't. Clear terrain. And drop a moved marker on here. This will be their second fired, so they're going to be used here. Our machine gun is going to be used up. Attack is three. Defense is three. Uh, we do pass through one, two. So we're going to get a minus two again on the attack. So that's going to end up being a minus two, the minus two column again. So again, we're going to need a nine, ten, a ten, eleven, or twelve rather. And this time we get an 11, and 11 is a casualty. So they will take a casualty, and that is a casualty point as well. The Americans are down to two impulses. The Japanese are down to one impulse point. They will move their other sapper now that it's safe to go. He'll just move up and join his buddy in the same hex there. And that moves them to zero impulse points. Now the Americans will spend their final two without anything to do, and that's going to end the turn. So now that we end the turn, we'll clean up our markers. Um, I didn't talk about the luck cards. So the Japanese drew Crazed, which says your troops fight like mad, add plus three to their firepower in a single melee. So they'll definitely take advantage of that as long as I remember to do it. And the Americans get suppressing fire at any point during your impulse. Place a used marker on any single enemy squad or crude weapon. This is also useful. All these luck cards tend to be pretty useful. There are some that don't really apply. And then you end up in a situation where, as the uh, rule book calls it, you have bad luck. So we're going to move back to the top here. Nobody is shaken or anything like that. So we're going to go turn marker down to turn. Um, turn. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Joe, come on. Turn number number. Uh, seven. Turn seven means we have to bring in our reinforcements for the Japanese. So after we move the turn marker, reinforcement phase is second. So we're going to get a bunch of tanks now showing up for the Japanese. So we have, we'll start at the top. We've got four Chihas. We'll drop them right here. Two Takes. Actually, they should probably be down south more. One, two, three, four. We'll put them down here. So they show up down there. We'll put Lieutenant Sato, who has a command range of three. We'll put him with the put him with these Hagos kind of in the middle. So that he can command all of the tanks. And they get an additional two impulse dice as well. So let's roll for initiative. And this time the Americans have a 10 and the Japanese have a 9. So the Americans have initiative. So let's do impulse rolls. So the Americans get one, one roll. 1D, that's a 2 plus 2 is 4. So they have a measly 4. And the Japanese get to roll all 4 dice for this turn. And they get 3, 4, 7, 8. That's a pretty bad roll with 4 dice, obviously. Um, so they get eight impulse points. Okay, so they have more impulse points, but the Americans have initiative. So having initiative for the Americans doesn't really help. They're going to pass, and because they have fewer than the Japanese, they are allowed to pass without spending one. So we'll go to the Japanese, and they can start moving. So what do we want to do? Maybe we want to move our tanks, right? So we didn't talk about tanks in the first uh, scenario because we didn't actually get to it and I need to point these I didn't really turn them correctly I guess okay so here we have a Hago tank the triangle indicates vehicle facing it's red so uh, if it was red and gray it would indicate it's not a turreted vehicle so it's facing would also determine its firing arc this is a turreted tank so it can fire in all directions but the vehicle facing still matters for armor purposes so we do have here the HE firepower is a 2, the range is a 10. The 2 here is its max maximum AP firepower, so when it's fighting another tank. The, the 2 and the 6 is its secondary firepower is a 2, and its secondary range is 6, so the mounted machine gun on the tank. Then on this side you have the, the two 2s, one is the front defense, one is the flank defense, so it's the same. 
And then at the top, you see movement. And then there's a little thing in, underneath that. It's a little bit hard to see. It, it's a little track, which indicates its movement type. So it's a tracked unit that can move five. So that's what the what the armor counters look like. So they, the triangle always has to face a hex side. So that would be something like along these lines, which means it's facing this direction. We can move five, so we will do so. One, two, three. And then for palms, going into palms for a tank costs two. So they'll move here and they will be done. And we'll slap a moved on there. And actually they could only move one of those because it doesn't have the leader with it. So we'll do it that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's moved. That cost them one impulse point. They're down to seven. The Americans will again pass. So the Japanese will move their other tank up to keep them together. And that cost them another impulse point. So they're down to six. Okay, so Americans will pass. Uh, we'll go back to the Japanese. And let's see, what do they wish to do here? Uh, well, they only have six impulse points left. So maybe they should just use, move their tank. So we got Lieutenant Sato here. So we can do a group move. Uh, we can go one, two, three, four. Or we can go one. Or one, two, three, four, five. Let's do that. So we'll put them here and we'll turn the tanks so that they're actually facing in an appropriate way. And we'll drop another moved on there. And that takes them down to four. So they're tied with the Americans now. Now the Americans do have a mortar. And it looks like, actually, the mortar has a range of 20. We're going to use our impulse point here and make a mortar attack. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They're in range, and they can be seen. Uh, this, this one can't because of this building. And Miyaki's got... Uh, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. Rifle squad can spot for him. This will be one. Uh, well, yeah, it's one. Uh, that's one impulse point. So we're going to do a mortar attack. So his firepower is a three. Range is 20. So in this case, this is a mortar support weapon. They have a minimum and maximum range. It's 320. This is actually the unit we're using right here. It's a 60 millimeter M2 mortar. The squad firing the mortar doesn't use its firepower. The target must be in line of sight, which it is. It cannot be spotted by other units. You roll a 1d6 for accuracy with four or higher being accuracy. Plus one if there's a leader attached. I don't think there is. There is not. Uh, and if, if, if inaccurate, roll a 1d6 for drift direction use, using normal drift rules. And then the attack is carried out only one hex away. Area of effect is one hex. The hit, attack hits all units in the target hex. There's only one unit in that hex. And so uh, we will we will do this here. All right, so let's roll our 1d6 for accuracy. So we need a four or better. We get a five, so it's accurate. Let me drop a strike on here so we know what we're doing. Boom. Just to mark it, even though we kind of know. Let's just follow the uh, the sequence here. So the firepower is, as I mentioned, three. Their defense is a three. They are in the open. They get no benefit from anything there. So we'll pull out our infantry combat table here. We're going to end up in this zero column. So we're going to need a high roll, basically, to make this work. Um, so here would be your accuracy and drift if we had not, and this is for off board, but it's it's somewhat similar in, you know, in, in effectively it's somewhat similar. So we now roll, uh, we're on target, we know that, so we're going to roll for our attack here. And we rolled a four, which is terrible and is going to be nothing. So they fired, but didn't do any good. So we're going to drop a fired marker on here 
And that, it, that is that. So they use an impulse point there. They're down to three now. And we go back to the Japanese. And let's see, what do we want to do with them? Let's have this, uh, I guess we're going to focus on moving our tanks up. So we're going to take our top TK or TK one, two, four. And we'll just drop him there, turn him around so he's facing the correct way. And they always have to face a hex side, not a vertex. And that moves them down to three impulse points. Now the Americans, in theory, they can attack. Let's attack Lieutenant Arimoto with our heavy machine gun again. Why not? We might as well do something here. So, uh, again, it's a minus two. We know it's a three attacking a three. Defensively, we're attacking the, uh, the, the, the unit to which... Aramoto is is attached. So we're going to end up in the minus two column again because of the, uh, the, the degrading line of sight. And this time we rolled an eight. And an eight is still no damage there. So um, let's just slap a fired on here. That is again going to be a impulse point spent. So we're down to two. Japanese turn. Let's move our other tank up so he joins his friend. And that moves them down to two. Back to the Americans. Uh, I think we can fire at this guy, if I remember correctly. So we might as well fire our other shot here at this guy, just like we did before. It's the same exact thing. We know we're in the minus two column. And we rolled a 12, and that's what we needed to do. So in the 12, you get a casualty and broken. Doesn't apply, but one casualty is enough to kill this guy. So he's dead. And they're now at two casualty points. And the machine gun is now used. And that brings the Americans down to one impulse point. We go back to the Japanese. They have two left. They're going to move their tanks. So through shell holes is two. And we have to check for bogging. So this is an opportunity to show how bogging works. So we're going to roll... We're going to roll 1d6, and if we roll a, a 1, which we did not, but if we had rolled a 1, they would bog. They did not. So they can move again into palms, which does not have a bogging, but that costs 2, and then we'll move here, which is 5. So that's a total of 5. Let's turn them around. So they're down to, to one impulse point. The Americans have one more that they can do. Let's drop another mortar attack on somebody. Why not? So we're going to do the same thing we just tried. We'll attack this guy again. Roll for accuracy. Got got it. So strike marker. Now we'll roll for effect. We are in the zero column. And we got a 10. That's actually a pretty good roll. A 10 in the zero column is a casualty and a shaken. The shaken won't apply, but the casualty will. So we'll reduce that sapper. And that will complete the... Uh, that will complete this unit's activation. So they're down to zero. The Japanese will, oh, they get another casualty point, so they're at three. The Japanese will move their other tank up to join his buddy here. And they will be done as well with their zero. So they're down to zero. That ends their turn. That ends the turn. There's no melee or anything here. Turn six. All right, so no reinforcements this turn. The Americans will get some... Uh, They'll get a couple M3 Stewarts and uh, two rifle squads in turn five. But for now, no reinforcements, so we can skip ahead. We're not attaching or moving any leaders or weapons. No smoke. Scenario rolls, there aren't any. Uh, ra rally rolls, there also are none of those. So we are going right to the initiative roll. So as usual, roll. And we have five and six. So the Japanese win by one. Now we'll roll for Japanese um, impulse points. They get all four dice. This one's a much better roll than last time. They get uh, 10, 16, 18. So they get 18 impulse points. And the Americans, who only get to roll 1D plus 2, get a 4. So they get six impulse points. The Japanese will go first with their 18 impulse points, which are obviously necessary. They have a significant number of units here. 
Uh, the Americans will be adding an impulse die of their own in turn five and then again in turn four. So ultimately, we're going to have a whole lot of impulses in the second half of this game. All right, first things first, let's figure out what's going on with the uh, Japanese here. So let's uh, let's take our tanks. So we have two Hagos here. We have Sato. Let's move Sato first. He's sitting with a, a couple of Hagos. He's going to move, group move. So this will be two impulse points. One, two, three, four. And then shell holes, I believe, uh, shell holes, yes, they would they would be too expensive for him to enter. So they're going to stop here. Now we do have two units here that are equipped with bazookas, which have a, a range of only four. So obviously they can't reach out and say hello. And we have our mortar. And they could, in theory, attack, but, I mean, they're... Their defense against, uh, well, they're, they're a tank, so we're not going to fire on a tank with a machine gun or something. So we're going to put a moved marker on here. And they, they used two impulse points, so they're down to uh, 16. Now the Americans get to go. They will pass. So it'll go back to the Japanese. We'll move our tank. This Hago will go two, three, four, and stop there. That's one. So that would be 15. The U.S. will pass, so we're going to move the other one, two, three, four, as well. Down to 14. They both get a moved. The U.S. will pass again. We have our uh, Take here. So they can go two three, four, five. And again, actually, it would be just one of those moving at a time. So that's 13. And then we'll do the same thing after the Americans pass. And that brings them down to 12. The Americans pass again. Because again, we're waiting until they come into range here, essentially. Although I can fire my machine gun again. Uh, Akimoto, and I can also fire my mortar. I'm kind of laying low here for the moment, letting them do something um, from the American side, of course. From the Japanese side, we're trying to move our tanks up. So if we go with this one, we can go one, two, three, but we have to check for bogging. So again, we check for bogging and we roll one D6, and if it's a one, they bog. Let me roll the, the right die here. Oh, look at that. They rolled a one, so they bog. So he's bogged, and that's an impulse spent. We'll take this guy. I'm going to send him one, two, three. He also has to roll to check for bogging. He gets a three, so no. So that's one, two, three, four, five. He gets a moved. We're down to ten now. So let's uh, let's let's continue on here. One, two, three, four, five for this guy. That's uh, now nine, and he'll do the same. One, two, three, four, five, and that's down to eight now. Okay, now let's see. We're down to having infantry to have to move now. How do we want to approach this from the infantry standpoint? So we can do a group move for Akimoto here, where it would be one, two, three. And th their movement is three. So he's going to end up stopped there. Now he's not in a spot where I can hit him because we have line of sight degradation here. And I've got to put a move on this guy as well. Let's fire our mortar. Yeah, I believe we had line of sight here, if I remember correctly, because these are shell holes, which don't degrade line of sight. The units also do not degrade line of sight. So again, when we fire for, when we fire a mortar, we have a, well, here, let's, uh, let's break out the card for it. These cards are actually pretty useful. So here's our card. Okay. So you can see it's firepower is three, range is three to 20, support weapon. Okay, so we know the accuracy roll is four. 
we get a four, so it's good. That means we fire with a firepower of three. So their defense is three, they're in the clear, no modifier. So we're just in the zero column. And we roll two dice. And we get a seven. And a seven in the zero column is a shaken, which is no effect on a Japanese unit. So we'll put a fired marker on here. That's the first American impulse point spent. So they're down to five. The Japanese are at eight. So we'll have our sapper move now because he's probably going to want to get out of the firing line here. So we'll go one, two, uh, three. And then from here, I think Lieutenant Quinn's heavy machine gun has a bead on him. So let's take a shot here because I believe that is clear. That is also clear. So uh, they are going to have to move across clear terrain here to get in position. So they're here. They moved. And our machine gun is only going to open up on them because, I well, we have this building. It looks like it almost doesn't touch that to get to there, though. So I'm going to say we're okay. So it's a three firepower, three defense. There's no deg no degrading line of sight in here either. So it's again, it's on zero. So we're going to roll two dice. Uh, there is a leader present, but it's not attached to the leader. Because the heavy machine gun is essentially crude. It's a crude weapon. And we get a seven. And so a seven with on on there again is just a shaken result, which is nothing. That's just nothing. So they're gonna get a fired marker as well. And uh, that's that. They're at so the Americans are at five, uh, four rather, and the J the Japanese are at seven. Back to Japan. We'll have Sergeant Miyaki move. So moving through palms is only one. So one, two. Three, four, five. Now these guys can fire at him if they have range. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So that's a two. That's two because that's a, a group move. So they're down to five. We're going to fire at them with our rifle squad here. So firepower of four. This is an army squad, not a Marine Corps squad. So they don't have five firepower like the Marines do. Defense is four. Um, or three, rather. They're firing on the rifle squad with Miyaki attached to it. And they get a defensive bonus of one for being in the palms. So it's going to be a four. Four on four, so we're in the zero column. And they don't get any benefits and there's no degrading line of sight. So we're just rolling on the zero column again. Yeah, nobody's elite in this one. Seven, so that's gonna end up being nothing. All right, so now they are completely used. We'll drop the used on there, they're done. Now they moved, they moved, but now they're gonna fire. So that takes them, the Americans are at three, Japanese are now also at three. And they're going to do a group fire and go down to one. And they're going to fire back because they have their light machine gun, which has a range of eight. So even And their rifles also have a range of six. So it's a group fire. So they have firepower of three, six, eight. They move, so they're going to have a, a minus one for moving fire. And they're attacking this hex, which has a building in it. And the building, yes, yeah, so if we look at the color of the building, it's brown. So that's a light structure. So a light structure for defense gives you a uh, plus one. And their defense is a four. So they're going to have a five defense against eight firepower. So that's a three, three column. And they're going to have a minus one die roll, but their leader will give them a plus one 
and so that is it. So it's going to just, there's no adjustment. They, they cancel each other out. We're rolling in the uh, three column. And we get an 11. That's a tremendous roll. That's an elimination roll. So they're going to kill these guys. And so that's the first American to be eliminated. And that's going to be two casualty points. The, the mortar remains here. And it's still under con U.S. control for the moment. But there's no squad there anymore. So these guys go to used. They are down to one impulse point. The Americans have three. Um, unfortunately for the Americans, these guys can't see anybody else. What do they have? They have a Browning that's only got a range of of uh, six, I think. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. They can only reach out to this area. I guess they would be able to. Yeah, they can attack this hat, this sap sapper. So they're going to do that. I'm just going to mark them used. It's a three attacking a three. We're going through two, two line of sight degradation. So that's going to be a minus two on the roll in the zero column. So basically, we have to roll a twelve or an eleven to inflict a casualty, and we get a five. So no, no love there. That moves them down to two. The Japanese have one left. Let's take this sapper and go one, two, three. Uh, three and stop there and He's moved That is the last of the Japanese impulse points the Americans still have two, but they don't really have anybody who can fire uh, Nobody can reach any of these guys So they're gonna have to spend their two points in a pass and a pass and that'll end the turn so that ends turn number six and we will get ready for turn five and turn five will probably be the last turn i'll do in this video and then we'll do turns four through one in a in a part two video because i don't want this to get super duper long okay so it is the start of turn five and we have a couple new additions to the american forces here at the top up here we have two m3 shirt uh stewards rather that have arrived so let's take a look at the stewart real quick so here we have the stewart stewart rather and so as you can see, it's got a 37 millimeter M6 gun, six movement points, front and flank defense are two each. The HE firepower is two. Uh, it is tracked. Secondary firepower with their machine gun is uh, firepower two, range of six, maximum range 10. So you can see here the range and the two hit and the AP firepower based on their distance. It's tracked. And it's got canister firepower at one to three hexes, so they can fire canister at the uh, Japanese infantry. So that's useful. And that is, as they say, that. The lowdown on the stewards, they're up here on the road because they can drive on the road for a half, half a movement point. And then we have two rifle squads that enter down here in the corner. That's why I moved my dice tower. I'm going to put it back now. And we will uh, roll... For first thing we have to do is we've done reinforcements, so we would move to uh, the free rally and bog rolls. So we do have a bogged tank here. Now the way bogging works, the bog roll, for freeing a bogged vehicle, you roll 1d6 in the free rally bog roll phase. One attempt per turn. So if we don't, whatever happens here, we're stuck with it. You know, on a roll of three to six, the unit's freedom may move. Roll a two and the vehicle remains bogged. Roll one and the vehicle's permanently immobilized. So we'll be stuck there for the remainder of the scenario. So we're going to roll one die. And we rolled a two, so it remains bogged. So bad luck for the Japanese there. Now we'll do our initiative roll. All four dice. The Japanese get a 10 and the Americans get a 5 so the Japanese retain initiative now we'll roll the four dice for their Im um, impulse and they get 11 12 14 so the Japanese will start with 14 and the Americans get a second die now so they're rolling 2d6 instead of 1d6 2d6 and they'll add two and they get a 7, so they will start with 9. 
So nine for the Americans, 14 for the Japanese. The Japanese have initiative and we will get underway. All right, so let's see, what shall we do here? We have some tanks and the tanks do have a range of six with their secondary firepower. But we know that the American tanks are on the scene now too, so they may want to hold off and let the American tanks approach and then determine what they're going to do about it, right? So uh, that's, how I would, that's how I would do it anyway in my head. So let's take Sergeant Miyaki here. We're going to do a group move with his men. And this is going to be dangerous because they have the machine gun there, and as soon as we move out, they have this blocking, so that'll help. But we want to get to the control so they can only move three anyway, and this would be one and then two into the shell hole. Um, so we'll do that. That's a group move here. We'll drop a moved on there. They are safe from being fired upon because there's a blocking line of sight here and a blocking line of sight here. So these guys can't see them. They don't have any weapons that can reach that range anyway. They can't see them, and they can't see them because of this building. So that's a safe move there. They're down to 12. So now the Americans get to move. We'll activate one of our tanks. So that's going to move us to eight. We'll activate one tank because they don't have an armor leader yet. He comes in the next turn. So we're going to go half, one, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to face this way. We'll put a moved on him. And that's one American impulse point, so that's seven left. So now the Japanese will move again. And I think what we'll do now is their range, the Japanese range for, which one is this? A Hago. So here's a Hago. So let's take a look at what the Hago has on it. Now, Japanese tanks weren't exactly behemoths here. But here's a Hago tank. And as you can see, it's got a Type 94 37 millimeter gun, five movement points, front and flank defense is two, HE firepower is two, secondary is uh, two with a range of six, maximum range is 10. So here, here's, our, here's our range, right? Two hit numbers and armor piercing firepower. It's only a two, not great. So our steward is here. There's a building actually in the way, but we're gonna just look at this in a theoretical manner. So here's Sato. He can move up. You know, if he moves here through the palms, he can move through the palms without worrying about bogging, but it costs two movement points. So he could go two, three, four, uh, five. And then he's firing there and he's going to get one degradation on line of sight. They can also op fire back. So let's do it now before the second tank shows up. How about that, right? Let's do it this way. So we're going to say he's going to group move. This will cost us two and take us down to 10. So he's going to go two, three, four. Now from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. The range is six. So he's going to have a two hit number of eight and his firepower is, of course, a two. On the flip side, the steward. At six, see, here's the thing, that he wants to stay at six because if he goes to five, the steward's to hit number gets easier and their firepower also gets stronger. So he's gonna stop here and put him, we'll put a moved on him. Now the steward is going to fire. We're gonna take an opportunity fire shot. It's gonna cost us one impulse point to bring us down to six. We're gonna stop and fire they can't fire till their next impulse, basically. So, again, we're looking at, so we have to roll for, first of all, we have to roll. So we haven't done vehicle combat before, but you have, so here's, here's the vehicle fire table. So first thing you have to do is roll to make sure you can actually hit it, which is the two hit number. And the two hit number for a Stuart at range six to 10 is an eight. So you have to roll an eight or higher to hit it. So the two hit roll is um, unmodified. 
So we're going to roll 2d6. If we get an 8 or higher, it is a hit. And we got an 8. So that is a hit. Okay, so their firepower is 2. The armor on the Hago is a 2. Uh, it's actually this one, but it's the same same as this. So it, the, the armor is a 2. And we're attacking the one with the leader, of course. So it's a 2 and 2. So our firepower, we're on the 0. So we're on the 0. Now we got to apply our modifier. So we do have a degraded line of sight because we do kind of nick this, this hex here. So we're going to subtract one from our roll, and we're going to subtract a, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. We changed to the minus one firepower. That's a firepower modifier. So it's a minus one firepower. We get a minus one for moving fire, and that's it. So we're, we're rolling on the minus one chart, and we get a minus one on the roll. So we need an 11 to destroy it. And what did we get? An 11. So we actually knock out the tank. So this tank is actually destroyed. Now we have to determine what happens with the crew and Sato. So since the unit was destroyed, we have to roll for the crew and the leader. So uh, if we roll on a, if we roll a six, the crew survives. And we rolled a six, so the crew did survive. Now we have to roll for Sato, and he's a one to three. We'll kill him. And it's a four. So Sato and the crew both survive. So what happens then is you actually have to put a crew marker down. Grab a crew marker. So here's our crew marker. And Sato as well. And they remain. And our Hago is destroyed. And that's two casualty points, which moves the Japanese to five which means that they are now going to lose one on their uh, impulse die roll. Okay, so they have now moved and fired, so they are used. That costs us one, one impulse point. So we are down to uh, six. The Japanese are at ten. That was the Japanese uh, phase, so we go back to the Americans, and we're going to move our other... Stuart, so that it is here as well. So the bottom one is used, and the, whoops, we have our, our facing off there. This guy's used. This guy is moved. That costs us one more, so we're down to five. And we go back to the Japanese. Let's see, the Chiha has a bigger gun, so it has better firepower. So if we go one, two, Three. If he goes here, one, two, three. Now at this point, he can op fire at him. Uh, actually, he can't because the building obscures his view. But if they move up more, because they can go here with four, because this is now half. So that'd be three and a half, four, four and a half. They do that, then they're going to be in, let's do it. Japanese are aggressive, so I'm trying to, to kind of mimic that behavior. So it's three to here, that's four, four and a half. Now we have op fire. Op fire from our other steward to try and stop him there. His ultimate goal is to get here. So we have our steward again. Now it's firing at this Chiha which has front defense of three. So he's firing uh, the same as before. So we roll first for our two hit number, which we need a uh, seven or an eight. No, a seven because we're at close range. We get an eight. So they do hit. Now we figure out the firepower. So we know the firepower for it at that range is a three. So their defense is a three. So again, we're at zero. We do have the movement penalty. Um, there is no degradation of line of sight. So the firepower stays in the zero column and we're looking at a minus one for moving fire. We get a nine, minus one is eight in the zero column. That is a D for damage. So we have to do a damage roll. 
So on the damage rolls, so here's our damage roll on the chart here. We roll 1d6, and then based on that, it tells us what it does. So let's roll 1d6, and we got a 6. A 6 is an abandoned roll. Actually, that will not happen because it's a gut check, and the Japanese do not take gut checks. But it does stop them because they were hit. So they are stopped here. They are now used. So that moved the Japanese to 9. It's now the Americans' impulse. So let's move some of these. Let's move our riflemen up. So road costs them 1. Just so it's the same as moving over ground. So we're just going to go... One, two, three, four, and put them here. Actually, we're going to only move one of them, because we can only move one. That moves them to three. He's now moved. Now we go to the Japanese. So they're going to fire at their tank here. So even though it was damaged, basically, we uh, there was no no real damage. You just uh, to abandon it because of a panic, but they didn't. So let's look at our Chiha tank data card here. All right, so it's got a Type 97 57 millimeter gun, so a little bit more firepower. Movement five, front front defense three, flank two, HE firepower three, secondary two with a range of six, maximum range is ten. So the range to the target's only three. So they're going to get a seven for the two hit number. And their armor piercing is a two. So we'll roll for their two hit. Now they moved. Um, so they will take a, they don't have a de degraded line of sight or anything. And they roll a five, so they didn't hit. So they're used and they did not hit. Um, now one thing I did not do is I have to put an acquired on here. Because they are acquired which makes it uh, slightly easier to hit them when we fire on them again. So that was one impulse point for the Japanese. They're down to eight now. It goes back to the Americans. We'll move our other infantry here up. That leaves them with two. Back to the Japanese. They have eight remaining. Let's take our other Chiha here. We have one up. We have two here, right? Yep. So they can go through the palms, I guess, and we'll go two, uh, two, three, four, five, and stop. And one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Pretty close. So let's take Sergeant Savage here with his rifle crew and his bazooka. And they're going to go one, two, three. And we'll put a moved on here. And they're used so they can't op fire back. So that leaves us with one impulse point. And now we go back to the Japanese. And they're going to move their other Chiha. Same place, two, three, four, five. So now they've got two Chihas up here. That leaves them with six impulse points. We'll go back to the Americans. These guys are now going to fire. One, two, three, four. Okay. So when you fire a bazooka, so here's our bazooka. Okay. So when fired from structures, that does not matter here. Use a melee, not matter. HE firepower you can use against, um, you can use it against targets in enclosed spaces only, like structures, bunkers, and caves, right? Maximum range is four, so we're at four. We need a 10 to hit, so that's tough. But if we do hit, we get a firepower of six, so that will be nice. We are gonna, we're gonna take a crack at this and hope for a 10. So let's roll a 10, and look at that, we got an 11. So we did hit. Now firepower is a six, again, it's three. Um, they're three because it's front armor, On the Chiha is three. So that we're in the three column which is pretty good. It's a pretty good column to be in. Three column, we do take a minus one for moving on our roll. And we do have a leader, so we get a plus one. So that wipes that out. So, okay, so to destroy in this three column, anything eight or up kills it. So let's see what we get here. And we got a six. Shoot. 
All right, so a six is broken, which does not apply to a Japanese unit. So, unfortunately, even though they got lucky enough to hit the thing, they didn't do any damage. All right, that is the last action for the Americans. The Japanese are at six. No, they're at five, actually, because they did move. Yeah, this is a tough, tough call here. Let's move our other tanks, I guess. So we'll take this tank. Two, four, five. And that's one. The Americans are out, so two, four, five. Whoops. So they both moved down to three. And we have our T TKs here as well. One, two, three. It leaves us with two. One, two, three. Move them both here for four. That leaves us with one. Well, let's drop a moved on here. But with my one remaining impulse, we're going to use our TK secondary armament, which is pretty weak, actually. So maybe I won't. Let me use the Chiha instead. Secondary armament on the T TK here, so you can see on their card. It's only got a one firepower. Pretty worthless. But the Chiha, this is a Chiha, right? Yep. Chiha has a two, so we'll use the Chiha. So I have a top Chiha here. We'll fire the ranges four. They're going to take on Lieutenant Quinn and his squad who are hiding inside a foxhole. So they're going to get a plus one on their defense of four and make it a five. So that's a five. Um, so it's two attacking five. They're going to get a minus one on their roll. So this isn't going to work out probably unless they roll really, really well. So we will roll. We're on the minus three chart and they don't have a leader. They did move, and so they get a minus one. So minus one on the three column is a, with a five is going to be nothing. So they needed basically like a 12 or an 11 would have inflicted, no, 12, yeah, 12 would have inflicted a casualty. Everything else would have been a, bro, a broken or a shaken check. So that is nothing. They are used. Um, that's the last impulse point. That's going to wrap up this particular turn. So we will wrap up our particular video here as well. So that is the end of this turn. This was turn number five. We have four turns remaining plus potentially the uh, turn zero, depending. We'll roll and we'll see where we are unit-wise, victory-wise, etc., uh, the current status is the Japanese have five casualty points, so they will be taking a minus one die roll modifier on their next uh, impulse roll. And the the Americans are at two casualty points, but one of the uh, one of the victory locations, the control hexes, is unmanned, and there is a mortar sitting in there. So I need to try and see if I can get some infantry up there before the Japanese claim it, and then I have to try and maybe counterattack and push it out. In turn four, the Americans will get more reinforcements. They're going to add a couple of M4A2 Shermans, as well as an armored leader. So that will be coming up in the next video. As always, thank you for watching. My name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.